Tonight I'm going to minister to you on two things, very, very important things. Flowing in the anointing and the release in the anointing, okay? And, and I'm going to minister to, to you on this for the purpose of you doing it as soon as you leave here. Some of you have done it to some degree um, or other, and what we want is we want the full measure and the full uh, degree. And um, so I've got a lot of things to say on that. It's actually very, very simple. You know, I, I've laid a foundation about the disposition, you know, being in, you know, just keeping your spirit right. That's really keeping your spirit right and, and staying in joy and staying in love, staying in peace and, and staying in faith and staying in boldness and staying in confidence. All those things do is keep you hooked up with the Holy Ghost. And, and it's the Holy Spirit that then supplies to us the anointing. So the most important thing about flowing in the anointing and releasing the anointing is you've got to know you have something from God. I know I have something from God. Um, I've been in the context of situations where I was tired and completely exhausted and worn out and in a meeting with uh, eight, 9,000 people and all of a sudden the person who was doing the meeting said, oh, Mark, would you please come up here? And I'm like, I hope there's another Mark in the place. <laughs> and then I realized, no, I I'm being addressed. So I just go up and but as, but I, the thing about it is I'm not timid, I'm not intimidated. I'm, I'm, I have something in God. You need to know that you have something in God. I, 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 it doesn't matter where, where I'm at. It doesn't matter how tired I am. It doesn't matter how, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm out surfing or if I'm uh, snowboarding or, or, if, or if I just got out of bed or if I'm so tired, I, as soon as I hit the bed, I'm going into a coma state. You could wake me up. I got something. I'm not arrogant about it. I'm very, I'm very uh, submitted with it all. I don't have to be in front of the program, but I got something. I sit in many meetings sometimes where I know I got a whole lot more going on in here than what's going up over there. I don't get into a thought-like process that way. I leave it. I leave it, and I submit myself to what's going on, and I keep a right attitude about it. But the, the more important thing is to know that you've got something from God, that you carry something powerful in God and not being arrogant about it and not being pushy about it and not being demanding about it because there's so many people who've messed up before they've even gotten started because they always want, they want to be recognized. They want to be seen. I can tell you I've never needed to be recognized and I've never needed to be seen, but when called on, I'm telling you it's coming down. The, if the message is coming down, the flow is going to be released. I want to help you. I want to help you with that. I want you to understand, when I first started flowing in the anointing, I did not deserve any part of the anointing. None of it. Didn't deserve it. Didn't earn it. Didn't earn one single bit of it. Didn't really know, um, really firsthand, what to do. I had watched all my life people function flowing in the anointing. But it's one thing for you to sit around and watch somebody else function and flow in the anointing, and you're doing it yourself. And so, I, I mean, my goodness, you know, uh, you, you think about poor Elijah. Who was around to teach Elijah? Elijah the Tishbite. As far as we know, he had nobody around to help him. I mean, you know, who was going to help Samuel? Eli? No. Eli was out of there for the count. My goodness. And then, you know, here is a powerful verse of scripture that I want to just use tonight for you to grab a hold of. First John chapter 2, verse 20 says, we have an anointing <laughs> from the Holy Ghost. Really, from the Holy One, and you could say Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus, or the Father God, either one of the three, and you got it. And I like to say the Holy Spirit because he's the one right here, right now, teaching us. And we know everything. Then somebody says, you know everything? You got it. I know everything. And since somebody wants to come out with a test, oh, you don't know everything. I mean, do you think? No, I know I have the capacity to know everything about flowing in the things of the Spirit. To know, I have the capacity to know everything about functioning in the realms of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And see, the Holy Spirit has come, according to John chapter 16, to transfer all of those things to me that belongs to Jesus and Father caused all things to belong to Jesus. He gave everything to Jesus. Jesus said in John 16, 14, he says, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, the Holy Ghost will take of what I have and will transmit it, reveal it, disclose it, show it to you. So we, we fundamentally, 
we see that there is a capacity that has been given to us by the anointing, and, it's, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, what does matter is how bold you are. What does matter is how confident you are. Faith is everything. Without faith, you can't please God. You've got to be assured. You have to be certain. I mean, God gave me a certainty, gave me a knowledge from day one. And, you know, I, I didn't have to, you know, once again, I, I believe people need to honor you to be able to really receive uh, from you. But honor comes in many different forms. They just, just, they just can't, you know, they just got to be willing to connect some, at some level. Because, I mean, I'm, I can think of many, many times where I ran across people. I mean, I didn't even know them or just barely knew them. And I said, you're healed in Jesus' name. They were healed. I mean, I'm just, I'm talking about just starting in ministry. I can tell you people who were, um, uh, from the time that they were five or six years old, um, heavily med medicated for manic depression, um, uh, various different respiratory and respiratory diseases, all kinds of skin ailments. I mean, the Lord gave me a real big diversity. And I was just walking to people and said, no, you're not, you're not going to have that no more. You healed in Jesus' name. I mean, that... And it was almost like there was a period of time in my life where it seemed like, you know, that I had this statistic that was almost even better than it is now. I mean, my wife, when I first met her, as she said, I have allergies. No, you don't. No, in Jesus' name, you don't have allergies. I commanded to go. No more allergies, you know, kind of thing. And, and it's just knowing. I had a knowledge. I had a knowledge. I was just radical enough to believe what the Bible says. And I wasn't, I wasn't allowing anything to condemn me. Would, would I have a lot of reason to be condemned? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to talk about being an immature Christian, talk about stumbling up all of the time. That would have been me. But you know what? I had this great confidence that a grace had been given to me, that a free gift had been given to me, and that, that God wanted me to go do this. And so I just went everywhere, and I did it. I didn't ask for permission. I didn't ask nobody for permission. I was on assignment from God. I mean, I was on assignment from yeah. God. I was on a mission uh, from God, hallelujah, a real one, okay? I was on a mission from Jesus Christ. I was fully bought in on this thing. It was my identity. It's how I defined myself. I wouldn't let nothing else define me. And, of course, you know, when you're younger, you know, my goodness, you can already do anything. You, you, you're invincible already. You're already invincible. And so, uh, you know, I didn't have to deal with failure. I ain't even had a chance to fail yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't have to deal with discouragement. I hadn't even been through anything to be discouraged about. So a lot of those things weren't, weren't in my way to begin with, okay? Condemnation wasn't in my way because I was certain I'd received a free gift that had nothing to do with me. I realized I was weak. He was strong. I was nothing. He was everything, okay? And that he had signed me to go and do these things, and therefore I was just supposed to do them on his behalf, and he would do the rest. And so I want to be able to help you understand that. I want, you, I want to help you get... I, I want to help you guys get past your condemnation. My goodness, I want to help you get past those, those intimidations, those fears, those restraints, those whatever it is that gets in your way that keeps you going round, round, round in a circle. You know, I tell you, uh, most ministers will tell you, most preachers who flow in the anointing say that they look around and they see the majority of people just going around in a circle. So if somebody asks me about so-and-so, they say, is they, are they still going in a circle? And it's a common thing. You know, if I might ask somebody else, I say, because I see it's calling God on somebody's life in some of the meeting or some of the ministry or some of the church, I say, are they still going in a circle? You know, because ultimately at some point in time, you start moving out in a straight line. That means you're bold, you're confident, you know where you're going, and you're not going to be held back. doesn't matter what happens. Come, you know, as my mother used to say, come hell or high water. You know what? We're doing this thing. We've made up our mind. We are determined. And I'm going to say, that is a large part of what we mean when we talk about surrender. When we talk about consecration, okay? We're talking about, we're doing this thing. Ain't nothing getting in our way. Nothing stopping us. That's consecration. That's surrender. If he was sitting around trying to be consecrated, oh God, oh God, oh God, please accept me. He's already accepted you. Get over yourself. He said it's done. Do it now. Okay, if he's done, then you can do it. Okay, hallelujah. And so, uh, uh, so then, you know, I'm just going to do a little, just tell a little bit about me, and then I'm going to talk to you more specifically about you. And then, you know, um, some things went on in my life, and, you know, just the Lord really just honing me in on the Word of God, preparing me. I mean, listen, think about this, guys. This is, this is who you got for a pastor. Everybody, when I was walking around as a young guy, first of all, I had these radical, crazy-looking prophets coming and prophesying over my mother before I'm even born, okay? Number one, proven, radical, wild-looking prophets prophesying over me before I'm born. 
And then everybody ever get around and they prophesy me, they prophesy and go over me, say, you're saying, you are a sharp threshing instrument that has teeth. And with it, God will thrash the mountains. I mean, goodness gracious, what a calling. Okay, so, I mean, my, just, everybody's got a unique thing going on. Okay, so you, you, if you try to fit who you are into me, you're messed up. God the Holy Ghost has a particular assignment for you. Who, what God has made me is for the purpose of participating and seeing you get released in that assignment. You hear because there's a certain type of edge God wants to file in on your life. He wants to hone in on your life that is going to be essential for you to be able to accomplish what God's called you to do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, you know. It's like, you know, somebody was saying to, to um, a person the other day, and they said, well, you know, um, you know, they, 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 they've got to learn how to, to pray. Yeah, they've got to learn how to pray. What they've got to learn to understand is they've got to find the spot. They've got to learn how to flow in the anointing. Yeah, you've got to learn, how to, you've got to learn the spot. Uh, they, they, don't have the same, they don't have the same edge. They don't have the same fire when they sing that song or preach that word. Yeah, because it's not about refining a skill. It's about discovering the spot. There's a spot. Okay, and the spot is this radical faith, bold, sold out. I'm going to do this thing God said to do it. Now, how long does it take some people to get that? Some people never get it. I got it in the first five minutes of salvation. Okay, I got it in the first five minutes. Some people never get it, though. Other people are somewhere in the spectrum. I got it. Now, you go through, this, you go through the culture of, of, of academics or just the whole way our culture is set up and you constantly, you know, are being beaten down, you know, and, you know, um, I'm broken of all self-esteem and remolded in somebody else's image. You know, watch Trift of All Ego and refashion in whoever's image you are around. Forget about all that mess. I was, I never really got into that. No one ever was able to strip me of anything. You know, I just never was that way. I was just like, what, you don't like what you see? That's okay, fine, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with you too. I never was into being uh, whatever what somebody else wanted me to be. And I think that holds people back. Okay, always trying to accommodate the, the views of people around you. Okay, you need to quit that. Just accommodate the views of the Father. Okay, Amen. and then what's going to happen? He's going to shape you and form you where you can love people like you could never love them otherwise. Gonna, so you can be good to them like you could never um, be good to them otherwise. So what I really want you to become under, I want you to understand this, this one thing. God, it's okay for you to not really have too much regard or value for yourself. That's fine. It's going to make it that much easier for you to deny yourself. Okay? So, good. You with me? Now, have all your confidence in God because He's giving you a brand new identity. He's giving you a brand new you. I got a brand new me. I got a brand new me and that brand new me was to go everywhere and be an Elijah but be more than an Elijah. I got it. I got it. I'm going to go do this thing. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Nobody's going to get in my way. Nobody's going to stop me. I don't need any permission. True. So I spend my life around revivalists, watching revivalists function, flow, and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Seen all kinds of miracles by the time I was 10 years of age, but I really didn't know. I really didn't know how to hook up with that. I didn't know. I was just a spectator. I was like most everybody else, just a spectator. And, and of course, I did get impacted because, I, my goodness, I was in church more than most spectators. And uh, then, uh, you know, then it came to a point in my life where, I mean, I just, I, I responded to the call of God and, and I knew what I was supposed to go do with my life. So I started going and doing those things that the Lord called me. I, I decided, you know what? The only group I needed to be was in, the only group I wanted to be with is the group in heaven. The only kind of identity I wanted to have was the identity of the men of God that are found in the, in the scriptures. And so, I mean, I just I, I bought, bought in on this thing. So it didn't matter if I was out in the middle of the surf for six hours and, uh, you know, uh, uh, completely exhausted. I was looking for somebody to lay hands on and pray for. I mean, it just didn't matter if I was in a classroom looking for somebody who needed Jesus. Uh, if I was doing research in a laboratory looking for somebody who needed Jesus. And, or whether I was on the sidewalk, because I used to walk up and down the inner city, streets of this inner city, just looking for somebody who needed a miracle. I mean, that's, I, you know, and, and, and that's because I bought in on this identity. And then later on in life, what happened was the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause you to meet everybody that I, that's running throughout the earth with my word. And, I, and, and let me tell you how the, prophet, how the prophecy works. Are you ready how the prophecy works? Prophecy actually comes out of your belly because you learned how to pray. You learned how to spot. So all I'm doing is I'm on my way driving, driving to work like I normally did, okay? And I'm usually driving to work and I'm praying. And I'm thanking the Lord for his goodness and I'm quoting scriptures. And I got so many scriptures in me. I'm preaching sermons, you know. Hallelujah. Just rejoicing down the Lord. 
I'm one of those guys you see in the car just driving, and it's like the mouth is constantly going before cell phones. Now, at least, there's an excuse. But at any rate, and then the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to meet people. I'm going to cause you to meet those that are, that, those that are running through the earth with my word right now. Okay? And um, it's pretty close uh, verbatim. So I get to work. And this woman, Frances Hunter, called me up. I knew who Frances and Charles Hunter was, and I didn't really too much care for them because they went around teaching people how to speak in tongues. And I didn't believe that that's what you were supposed to do. But I'm nice and cordial, and I'm thinking, how on earth did this woman get my telephone number? This woman, she's like famous in ministry. How does she get my telephone number at work? I mean, I'm just standing there going, okay, Lord, I've got this. I've got this. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna, to you're gonna introduce me to everybody that you've raised up in the earth. She says, I'm, I heard a lot about you. And I'm coming over to your church tonight. Is that okay? I said, well, come on on. And so they came over to the meeting that night. Hallelujah. They preached. And then it was one after another, 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 after another. I didn't call nobody. Nothing. I mean, just one after another. Because see, when God's ready to do something with you more than what you're doing right now, should you be willing to take up your assignment, no matter what you think about yourself, then what he's going to do is you get faithful. He's going to ultimately open up doors that no man can open up. He's going to shut doors that no man can shut. Are you listening to me? Okay. And there's never, it's never too late for anybody. Just, and don't make it about what's, you know, don't make it about what it's going to be in the future. Make it about what it is right now. Okay. Don't make it about what it's going to be in the future because it's plenty, plenty good right now. Okay. Don't make it about what it's going to be in the future because it's plenty good right now. And if it ain't plenty good right now, you don't get it yet. So we want you to get you over in the spot so you can get it so it's plenty good right now. Otherwise, it's always going to be in the future and you're never going to have it. I'm going to say that again. Otherwise, it's going to always be in the future and you're never going to have it. Okay. You're going to always. I call it rainbow Christianity. You're always chasing the rainbow, and you can never catch up to it. <laughs> I thought I had a genius idea when I was a little kid. I was going to create the rainbow, okay? And then basically, I couldn't catch the rainbow, so I could tell the person, no, now move over to the left, move over to the left. It's a little bit more to the left, because I got a hose, a water hose, and I got the... <laughs> I got the thing directed, right? I got the rainbow created, so we got the pot of gold coming up right over here. Okay, you never, but when you are trying to get it personally, you never catch it. And that's what happens. People are waiting for the future. They're like, forget about it. It's now. It's now. It's now. Scripture doesn't say salvation is the future. It says salvation is now. Today, right now. Now is the time. Right at this very moment. Today is the day. Amen. So you just need to rise up in that. So I said, I want to, but I just, I just feel so intimidated. That's a lying power of darkness, and you need to get yourself a bigger identity. I can tell you how to do that. Just fast and pray, and that thing won't mess with you no more. Because Satan knows when you get what I'm talking about, he can't stop you. He can't stop you. Because there's just no way, to, there's no way to intimidate you. There's no way to push you back. There's no way to push me back. You can't hurt me. You can't, I'm hidden away. You can't insult me. I'm hidden away. You can't offend me. I'm hidden away. You can tell me, I, you know, that I'm a dirty, rotten rascal or whatever, you know, and I'm fine. I'm going to be right there. Would you like me to flow in the anointing now? Okay, because I'm there. I'm ready. Would you like now? Would you like me to move? You got anything you want me to do? I'm there. I'm, you want to get there. You want to be hidden in place of Jesus. That's what we call surrender. So we call it consecration. People got their too much of their own ID, ID in it. And then that'll destroy you. Oh, I prayed for somebody to get healed. I must be a miserable failure. I prayed I had a cold. Nothing happened. Uh, God must not be listening to my prayer. All that's a bunch of wine and nonsense, man. You haven't gotten it yet. You're not looking at the bigger picture. And, and one time a preacher was telling me about how mad he got at God and he was screaming and hollering at God. And I just simply asked him, I said, please tell me, why did you make it God's fault, not yours? Because I've always made every bad thing my fault and every good thing God's fault. Huh? And if I've done something bad, I run to, the, I run to God and get something good. And that's pretty easy, isn't it? He said to me, he gave me a very honest answer. He said, because I was just too immature in those days. <laughs> so maybe that's it, you know. Well, let's just grow up. Somebody said, nobody likes, to, nobody likes to tell them that they're immature. Well, you need to get over it. <laughs> okay? Nobody wants you to tell them that they're a baby. Look. I mean, if you can deal with the reality of where you're at, you can move forward into the things that God has for you. But here's the beautiful thing. Let me tell you this. Here's what God's done for us. He actually, at the moment of the new birth, brought us into full sonship. This is radical. He brought us into full sonship. He, he, that's what Paul says in Galatians chapter 4. This is not my own ideas. He brought us into full sonship. He says that a child differs nothing from a servant as long as that person is a child, though they have, though they're heir of everything, though it all belongs to them, they're just, they're nothing more than a servant. 
They differ nothing in the servant. But when they step into sonship, then at that moment in time, then they are the heir, and now they get to go and do with, do with uh, that which uh, they have been entrusted with according to their own insight and administration because they're given the power to do it. That's what the Lord has done. He's made his sons. Well, I stepped in sonship day one. As many as believe God authorized. I got authorized. You've been authorized. If you've been born again, you have received an anointing and you know everything. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, this isn't like, oh, he's a freshman and he knows everything. Oh, just a little kid. Knows. No, God, the Holy Ghost has given you the capacity to know everything. It's only activated by faith. It's only activated when you step out of the boat and get on the water. It's only activated when you move. It's only activated when you believe enough to do it. Okay? Otherwise, it sits dormant. It's there. It's full of potential. But if you're, if you're afraid, you're running a risk, you don't know, I've never done this before. I never told a person, I never told a person who was uh, entirely medicated, and if they were, went off their medication, they, want, they would commit suicide. Don't ever take another dose of medication ever again. And, and it was already said, reported, if, they, that, if he doesn't take his medication, he's going to commit suicide. Don't ever take another drop of medication ever again. And the person obeyed me. And they were instantly and totally healed. The parents come storming in three, four days later. And the dad's really huge, big old guy. <laughs> and he looks at me and he said, well, if I didn't really believe that you were sincere about what you were uh, saying, I'd thrash you, basically something like that. And I, I said, what? He said, well, you told my son not to take any more medication. I said, I did. How is he? <laughs> he was perfectly healed. I, would, I'd never done that before. I didn't need no test. I didn't know no experiment. I didn't need no permission. I bought in. I bought in. Somebody said, oh, well, it's fine for you to say that. Take a risk for somebody else's life. Look, it wasn't a risk. I bought in on this thing, man. I bought in on this thing. I knew this. I was confident in this. I was bold. I've never lost my confidence. I never lost my boldness. Has things try to intimidate me? Are things trying constantly to keep me from moving forward? Oh, yeah. But you know what? It, I got a shield of faith. My shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen. Hallelujah. I got this breastplate of... Um, uh, I, I got this breastplate of righteousness and this helmet of salvation. I can't hear nothing. I got this helmet. Got this helmet on me, and I can hear nothing else but what this helmet of salvation is saying. That's all I can hear. <laughs> if I'm gonna hear something else, I'm gonna have to take the helmet off for a minute and say, "Hey, what'd you say? Hey, you can't do that." Ah, then I put my helmet back on. So. <laughs> and that's where I live, and that's where we want you to live. And then, you know, what the Lord began to do is begin to let me see inside how other men of God are flowing and operating the anointing. And, and for, for a number of different reasons, some of them are already starting to be, begin to be revealed, other reasons to be revealed in the future. But, you know, first and foremost, if the Lord had never brought Carlos and Connie in my life and had me travel with him, if Rodney, had, uh, Rodney Howard Brown had never come into my life and asked me to travel with him and, and I did meetings with him and... and and I can go on, the list goes on. Of, of all these wonderful men of God, Tim just here, and you know, Tim has me come to Papua New Guinea, stand up on, on the biggest night of his crusade, you know, and, and he said there was close to 50,000 people there, I don't know, but my goodness gracious, the power of God that fell, because he said, look, you know, it's your turn, it's your time, let's go. And, and I can go on and on with the list of people. If God had never done all of that, still, you and I, we've been personally given the Holy Ghost. We've been given something really on a level that Elijah didn't have. And, 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 and we give him something on a level, you know, really, it, it, I could say that Moses had it because he had the cloud. You know, he had the cloud. He had the cloud. He had the audible voice of God. He had face-to-face -face conversation with the Father. I mean, I'm, come on. I mean, if that's any, if, if that, if there's anything in the Old Testament that should indicate what we have in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it should be what Moses had with the Father. Pretty radical stuff. But you don't get it while you're sitting around waiting for some day. Neither do you ever get salvation if you're sitting around waiting for some day to be saved. One of the most important things to us in dealing with people's salvation is, are you saved? Well, I think so. Well, you're not saved then. Well, I hope so. No, 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 no. You're not saved. We want to bring you to assurance of salvation, assurance of faith. Well, do you have the gift of healing? I don't know. Uh, can you go everywhere preaching the gospel, cast out devils? Oh, I think so. Well, you don't got nothing. 
You don't got nothing. You don't have anything. You, you need to get convinced tonight of 1 John 2.20 that you know everything. <laughs> that you've got an anointing from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that you know everything about flowing in God. And you don't need any help because you've got it all. Father's come to help you. The Holy Ghost has come to help you. Jesus has come to help you. And when you look in that verse of Scripture, you can see it right there in, in 1 John 2. Uh, I guess probably about uh, verse 22, he didn't have the son, had the father also, you know. I mean, my goodness, I got Christ Jesus living in me. I got the father also. Give me a break. You don't tell me I don't know what I'm doing. Of course I know what I'm doing. But the Lord, the Lord took me and he, and, he, and he allowed me to go with Carlos. And, you know, I was so blessed when Carlos uh, w was willing to take me and, and, and set me up to start doing crusades. He, you know, it was such an honor. I'm like, I mean, goodness gracious, believe me. Carlos doesn't go every place to all the churches telling all the pastors, hey, I'm going to set up a crusade for you. I want you to start doing crusades, and, and, and then I, and I'll, and I'll help get him organized. I want you to run with crusade evangelism. Okay? God was honoring me in doing that. The, the Lord did not release me to do it, but he honored me in doing it. He didn't release me to do it. He gave me an option. He did. He gave me an option. But he didn't release me. He gave me an option, but he didn't release me because there was still hope. Now, if you stay with this program, I know it's a, I know it's a, I know it's I know it's a challenging one, but if you stay with it now, ha, ah, huh? We, you, something's going to happen that you won't even be able to imagine. I'm, I'm like, okay, Lord, I want to do. I, I want to be in the center of the best. I don't want an option. I want to be in the center of the best. And so, you know, I had that. I had other op opportunities, other options, other things that have come up. But that wasn't why the Lord had brought these people so close in my life. That wasn't why the Lord had made it to where that they had opened up their homes to me, where I, where I slept in the same hotel rooms, lived, stayed in the same homes with them, and things of that nature, and became intimately acquainted with who they are and what God was doing in their life. Let me tell you something, people. Everybody I know in ministry who carries an anointing that others can see, they know they got something. And we want you to know you got something. Because God in his gives the money, some, some person, some special something, they carry something, nobody else carries anything. You know, when we say somebody's carrying something, we're saying somebody knows how to release it. Somebody knows it and knows how to release it. That's what we're saying. And there's nothing arrogant about it. They know they got something and they know how to release it. If you, before you can ever release it, you've got to know you have it. Okay? I watch boldness. I watch confidence. I watch passion. I watch not possible to deter them from deter them from their focus mm -hmm. not possible you know everybody knows carlos is this meek quiet guy who's just really gentle and accommodating except for when he's going <laughs> when he's casting out devils at the end of the meeting but i mean i was with him one time where um, a bunch of stuff was being confiscated by immigration and some of the workers came out and I was sitting in the van with Carlos, and we were somewhere in Argentina, and and they said, well, the 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 uh, they just confiscated the camera and some other equipment. He goes, he screams to the top of his lungs. It's released right now. Now you get yourself back in there, and you get it. And his face was as fiery as he's ever talking to the devil. Now, if you're hanging around somebody like that, you think they're mad at you. They're not mad at you. They just broke off every stronghold. They just told the devil what to do, man. They just changed the world while you're standing there. It ain't nothing about you. It wasn't anything about you. The guys walked in, got the equipment, came back out with it. And it was confiscated. couldn't be released. Earliest possible release was 24 hours. Huh? It's 24 minutes or less. Because somebody who's got authority and knows they got authority has learned how to release that authority. And that's really what I want to grab a hold of with you tonight. I want you to understand that there is a place of the a realm of the anointing, a realm of the anointing that first comes to you by assignment directly from the Word of God. God says it's mine. God says it's yours. That's the first place. It's mine. When I first started telling, talking to people, releasing them from their sicknesses, releasing them from their diseases, releasing them from sin, releasing them from torment, Telling, casting devils out of people. I didn't feel any manifest presence of the Lord. I'm just going to be right straight up with you. I had a word. I didn't feel any manifest presence of God. I grew in that. That just became something later. People always got to do something off the manifest presence of the Lord. You, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. I do it on the word of God. Hallelujah. 
And somebody says, well, we've got to know the anointing center. I know the anointing center. He's on the inside of me. My goodness, i got the Father, i got the Son, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Watch out, get out of my way. If you can't get the job done, get out of my way. I remember one night being in a deliverance tent, and I learned so much from each person. I'm going to talk about Carlos a little bit tonight. I learned so much about dealing with devils on another level, changing things within the framework of the atmosphere on a whole nother level when I was with him, addressing authorities, either man or Satan, and seeing absolute shifts go on. But as an authority that's like, don't, don't you let nothing get in the way. And I remember I had such great admiration for a guy named Luis Barbosa, and Luis Barbosa at the time was heading up what was called the deliverance tent. And, Car and I was with Carlos, come off the platform, and Carlos is basically, he's the general, and he's doing the inspection of the troop. And, Car and, and, and uh, he walked by Luis, and Luis was just patty-caking around with the devil. And he, and he just let him have it. He let him have it. He wrecked him over the cold. What do you think you're doing? Now, people, you've got to understand, this is the way the men of God function that have any carry something that's going to get a job done who've got a purpose. This isn't, this isn't you know, this isn't politics, man. This isn't your mama trying to take care of you in your, in, at home, trying to comfort you. This is, this is war, man. This is about getting some skills. This is about getting, some, getting a job done. This is about dealing with your adversary, the devil. This is about people's lives. This is about, listen to that. Ain't nothing quiet about that. Ain't nothing quiet about that. They'll, they'll turn that thing up, man. There's red lights going, sirens blasting, people running out, you know, uh, with, with, you know, screaming and hollering. There's somebody that's on fire over here kind of thing. Or somebody needs to, you know, they, they, need, to, they need to be you know, pried out of a car that's smashed in on top of them. This is a matter of life and death stuff, but it's on a higher level. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to start, and it isn't about running over top of people. It's not about offending people. It's not about making people upset. It's about dealing with the most urgent issue. And when there's that kind of passion in you, man, when it hits you, it's, it's going to be on you. It's on everybody I know. Tim, you know, he loves to just kind of, he, he, he is intense. But what he does, he just jokes. <laughs> he just jokes to try to, to try to buffer his intensity. And, you know, and, but he's intense, and he, he, he and, and watch out, man. Don't stand between him and the goal. I mean, don't, you know, a long time ago, somebody said, don't get between the bull and the heifers or the cows, and especially if it's a, 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 a camel. He's going to take you down. He's going to trample you. He's going to run around. Right Don't get between the man of God, the woman of God, and their divine purpose, man. Because when they got it, they, they got nothing else in view. They can't even see you. They can't see you. They see that thing that's about to destroy somebody's life. We want you to get that passionate. We want you to get that bold. It ain't about running over people. It ain't about being impolite. It ain't about um, being... Um, Uncaring, God wants us to be caring. He wants us to be gentle. But we're talking about a passion and a determination. Get this thing done. Watch anybody who's got an authority to cast out devils. Watch when they go after it. If you expected them to smile at you, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Because they're not going to be smiling. They're, gonna be, they're, they're focused on a mission to get this soul delivered from the power of hell that would destroy them for eternity in hell. So I wanted to simply say, in hooking up with the anointing, to flow in the anointing, to be able to release the anointing, I want you to find that first fundamental place in the, in the authorization and the authority that has been given to you by the Word of God. I'm going to do this on the Word of God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be disobedient. I've not been disobedient to the faith. Praise God. And, um, you know, I, I don't feel like I've done anything. But reality of it is, and reality of it is, by and large, I have it. It's Christ in me that's done it. Amen. It's, it's, it, if we do anything, it's, it's, not a, it's not us that does it, but, but it's the grace of God that is in us that accomplishes this, this work. And then that, that's a great asset because it's not about me. I don't know. You know, uh, it, it's when, when I was going um, to Nepal the first time, and I must say, you know, I, I never done that before, you know. And so I, call, I, I, I knew everybody. I called up everybody. I could say, tell me, you know, listen, I'm getting ready to go. And, of course, everybody would pray for me and whatnot. I'm getting ready to go. Tell me. Give me one word. Hey, just remember, it's not you, it's God, okay? Remember the God factor. Remember the power that is within you. Remember, this is what Jesus is assigned. He's going to confirm his word. Things like that. And it's not about me. It's not about us. It's about just go get this thing done, man. Just go get, the, go get this thing done, huh? And nobody, and nobody was willing to help. 
Praise God, because the Lord didn't want him to help me. I know. Oh, he didn't want to help me. He said, go with me, hold my head and cover me. Tell me it's going to be okay every five minutes. Tell me, or at least every 15 minutes. Just tell me I'm going to be okay. Tell me I'm going to do it. I'm going to, okay. You don't, you got to get over that. And I'm going to tell you, the way you get over that is you learn how to talk to him. You learn how to rely upon him. You learn how to depend upon him. And we go through different things. I've gone through a lot of things from that first initial moment of time when I begin to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. And, and, and the time that I went and, and began to be used in even a greater way in the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, and the same thing is going to be for, for every person. We're going to get fashion. We're going to, get, we're going to go through some challenging things because the Lord wants us to depend totally on Him. He doesn't want us, he doesn't, he doesn't want us to basically collapse in the midst of, of, of the challenges, okay? It was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful day when, that, when I began to experience the manifest presence in a greater way. Not to say I didn't experience the manifest presence early on. I did because I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and there's nothing more wonderful in terms of manifest presence than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Huh? And the Bible said, it was a powerful manifest presence of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? And, 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 <clears throat> and lo losing the English language on a daily basis is a powerful manifest presence of the, the Holy Ghost. And, in, and this is what happens. As you grow and as you mature in the Lord, it just gets easier and easier to step into that realm and it's harder and harder to be out of that realm. The Spirit eclipses the natural. It's bigger than the natural. The things that are going on inside the spiritual realm far bigger, bigger than the things going on in the physical realm. That's why pain comes, Spirit says go. Pain's gone. Uh huh? Because that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, and he, he's bigger. What's going on inside of me, the real me, the inner realms of the soul and the spirit, this is the real you and the real me, this body, just an uh, overcoat right now that we're wearing that we will put off one day in the very near future to be clothed on with his glorious life of immortality, an immor immortal and internal body. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it's amazing that the Lord's going to take our physical body, our natural body, and He's going to raise that up. Uh, that's why, that's why, that's why bones were really important to Abraham. Bones were really important to Jacob. Bones, Isaac. Bones, huh? Joseph. Bones should be important to you too. Not ashes. Mm, huh? If you, some of you thinking about getting cremated, stop. I wouldn't be cremated if I were you. I'm not going to say it's going to keep you out of heaven, but in the Bible, it represents a curse. In the Bible, our culture, in the kingdom of God culture, says you should be concerned about where those bones go to rest because it's a testimony of bones coming back up out of that ground. Amen. When you scatter your ashes from here to yon, I mean, why are you not testifying <laughs> of the resurrection at that moment in time? I just want to add to that. I just want to add that. I thought it was important. So go ahead and get yourself a savings plan for getting buried properly. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I figure there's a lot of public lands out there, you know what I'm saying, a big forest. <laughs> you do it, right, you know? Who needs a spot? Just mark it with a tree. You know? But I'm not going to get into that. That's just, I shouldn't, shouldn't be talking about that. That down my secrets. <clears throat> I love the manifest anointing. Usually, now, you, you, there was a, in early, early in my life and early in my ministry, uh, I would just move by the, according to the word, under strong imp impression, you're healed right now. Under a strong impression, you go free. Not everybody I prayed for got healed. Not everybody I said go free was set free. I live, I've always, from the very beginning, left the results to the Father. It's not my department. It's not your department. It's your department. Speak the word. It's your department to lay hands on the sick and they recover. It's your department to go and do what God said. It's Father's department to give the increase. It's his, his department to give the results. We sow seed. We water. But the Lord he gives the increase. It's his, it's, it's, it's his department. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't carry a great earnestness about it. We need to. If, we're, if our heart's hooked up with God and as we mature, we'll become more earnest and more burdened about these things. Praise God. Okay? But now, as I begin to move in the Word, I'll feel the manifest presence of God. I'll feel the anointing. I feel the anointing and because now I've grown and matured in the gifts of discerning of spirits more. But I had the gift of discerning spirits right off the bat. So do you. You just don't realize it. You already have it. It's there. 
You just not been. You've not used it. Um, the other day, uh, the other day, uh, um, this uh, this prophet from uh, from Africa uh, looked at one of my friends and, and said, "Hey, went over whispered in his ear." Says I said, and he's very accurate in the word of knowledge. And he says to one of my friends, he says, "Hey, sir, I see I see the gift of prophecy bottled up on the inside of you. I want you to go with me because I want to show you how to release it." That's good. Because that kind of teaching, if the person is going to be willing to join himself unto him and go with him, you, they, they will learn, okay? And, and that will be just one area. But as you, as you begin to participate and as you begin to function and flow in these gifts of the Spirit and you give yourself to these things, you will, you'll be, you will begin to have them released in your life because of this work of the Holy Ghost. If you don't, if you just sit on it, nothing's going to happen. If you're doubting, if you're like, I just can't get it. I've just always been the, I was always the last one in the classroom. The teacher never liked me, and I think it's the same way with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> then you're never going to get anywhere, you know. you got to just stop that. you got to get over that, okay? you just got to know you've got something. Now, like, there's more things I could say about that. I might come back and say a little bit more about it, but I want to talk to you about releasing it. Okay, it's like some people I watch them go out to folks and they and they're like they 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 think that they are going to uh, have a transference of the anointing by their much saying and by their much praying and by their much speaking. Okay, and they'll lay their hands on someone. They oh God, oh, oh. they just go on this gigantic dialogue. You're not releasing nothing. You're not releasing nothing. It would be like Moses standing at the Red Sea going, Oh, God, what are we supposed to do now? Oh, God, if you would show, please come and help us. We're about to die. Can you see the Pharaoh? Can you see Pharaoh and his army behind us? They're about ready to you know, run over top of us. And can you see that this water is in front of us? No, God, we pray in Jesus' mighty day that you'd do something right now. Nothing's going to happen. The Lord gave him the rod to release the anointing. Okay? Can you see that? The Lord gave him the rod to release the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. The Lord said, stand still and behold, sal behold my salvation. He said to the people, stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. And he stretched forth his rod. See, they, he released the anointing. He stretched forth his rod. He stretched forth what that anointed uh, instrument that God had supplied to him, that, that place of, of divine contact. The Lord has given me my hand. When I blow on people, the Lord gave me that to breathe on them. I didn't start doing that because... I read that the Lord breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. I came under a great divine unction of that. And, and, and I want, I'm, you know, a number of years ago, I come under this divine unction. Of this, I breathed on somebody and went, bam. And I'm like, ooh. And I, because I, when I breathed, I felt the release, that same release of the anointing that I felt go out of me when I laid the hands on you before. You, you've had that same thing too. Because what, you know what's happening? You know how you felt it? Because you, 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 you were about to start doing something in God and all of a sudden the tongues came. Remember that? Huh? That was a release. It was a It was a release. Now what happens if you understand how to release the anointing that is on the inside of you. God said it's like rivers. It's a capacity is going to be like rivers. It's there. It's there. You can feel this thing build up on you and explode out of you, you know. I had one man of God that I got to spend a lot of time with. He would say, watch this. He'd fill up his arm with the anointing. It's going to freak you out. He'd fill up his arm with the anointing. Okay? Huh? Now, now grab my hand. I'm going to release it to you all the way up to your elbow. <laughs> feel it come, feel it come. There it goes. Now I'm going to bring it back. And draw it back and forth. Dear Brother Rodney. You know, and, and others. And others. I'm just, just bring out some things. Just talk about it. People, you can learn. To, there is a, the anointing is a tangible real realm. Okay? And, and, and it doesn't have to be that. It's that only to try to help teach other people. This is how real it is. Grab hold of my hand. I'm going to release the anointing into you. It's going to flow into you right now. 
Now I'm going to draw that anointing that's now built up on the inside of you. I'm going to draw it back into me. And, you know, you think, where did the woman with the issue of blood go to school to learn how to draw out the anointing? Are you with me? Where did the woman with the issue of blood go to school to learn how to draw out the anointing? Where did she go to school? The school of desperation. That's where she went to school. The school of intensive need. <laughs> the school of if I can only touch him, a faith, a confidence, if I can only touch him, I'll be made perfectly whole. That's how she learned how to draw the anointing. Okay? So it isn't about me sitting around. I'm not going to do it and play games with you. I'm not going to do it. Men of God that were around me, they showed me these kinds of things all of my life. They could have, they could, they could put you in a situation. I mean, I'm people that I've been intimate with all of my life, been around all my life. They could put you in a situation of a natural occurrence and they go, and, and you know, and the thing just be, as it were, spinning off its wheels, if you would, okay? Just imagine something in a natural world just to try to give you a, concept, a, 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 a conceptualization of this. Spin around as fast as it go and go, in the name of Jesus, and it, er, stop, pull on the brakes. A natural phenomenon. Now, as soon as they turn away, the wheel will start spinning again. As soon as they move away. But as long as they're there and they release the anointing in the name of Jesus, it stops. And it's the same way with sickness, the same way with disease. Ha! Same way with demonic activity, harassment, mental torment. Huh? Satan is constantly bombarding people's minds. If I wasn't shielded with the Word of God, I stay in the Word of God. I don't stay in the Word. I don't just stay in the Word of God because I'm trying to uh, learn some scripture, know more about the Father. It's a shield about me. <laughs> His glory is a shield about me. His Word is a, is a line into my path and a shield about me. His Word of truth is a shield of faith. It's a blessed prayer, it's a blessed prayer of righteousness. And it is a sword of the Spirit. My goodness, people just go, they go get involved out there in the world. Satan will absolutely bombard your mind and tell you there is no God and he doesn't like you and he'll do it in a short order. Anybody, anyone, anyone tell you that you are a murderer and you're going to go cut 15 people's heads off? I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to do something really wild and extreme because everybody's dealing with all kinds of thoughts. And as far as I'm concerned, all of them are just about as bad. Okay? Telling you you something that you're not. Telling God, telling you that God is something that he's not. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. And um, you're just going to have to recognize that it's not going to happen over there in that doubt and unbelief realm. And, and it, for me, it's just bad enough that people are going, being beat up constantly. Oh, you're no good. Oh, you can't do nothing. Oh, the pastor doesn't like you. God must not like you either. And all that other miserable bunch of nonsense. Huh? I've, I've, I've gone to my wife before and, then, and I said, Hey, baby, I mean, you ever feel like intimidated around me or anything? I mean, is, I mean, look at all, what's going on? Am I that bad? Hey, you know, get some reassurance here. And one friend of mine, he walked in the door. As soon as he walked in the door, the, the dog is a big old gigantic German shepherd killer dog, watchdog. Peas on the floor right there. <laughs> And the preacher goes, the man of God goes, this is ridiculous. And his son goes, Dad, that's how everybody reacts. <laughs> and, and it shouldn't be that way. It's a, it shouldn't be that way that because of the force of the anointing, the purpose of the wheel, the determination of the goal should threaten people, especially the people of God. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Bold faces like lions, amen, running like horses. Come on now. That's the army of God. I've never been intimidated by those folks at all. And I think the reason being is because it, I don't wear myself on my shoulders. I'm not, constantly, I'm not constantly insecure. I think that insecurity is one of the worst enemies of the anointing, flowing in the anointing. God wants to give you great security, not insecurity. Is insecurity not being insecure, being very secure, mean you're arrogant and forceful and pushy? Absolutely not. It just means you're determined and you're not going to be offended. Of course, everyone who loves his word is, you know, not offended ever. Okay? They have perfect peace. I'm just, because what, what, it means, what does it mean to love the word? It means that's where I draw my identity, my purpose. I know who I am. I'm all, a person who's insecure, they don't know who they are. They don't know where they belong. 
They don't know who their people are. They're going around. Have you ever seen, I love that little book. I want everybody to read it. I'm thinking I'm going to do a series of sermons <laughs> off the book. It's the book where the little, you know, the little birdie falls out of the tree, you know, out of the, you know, from, in, he was hatched out of the egg and mama didn't come and he falls out of the tree and he's going everywhere and he's going, are you my mommy to the crane? Are you my mommy to the duck? And are you my mommy to everything he comes in contact with? I think there's a lot of Christians. Are you my mommy? Or who, who, you know, who, where do I belong? Who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? God's told us who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And he demands that we be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and that I can't make that happen for you you can only make that happen for you I can only make that happen for me I can be an example of it I can show you I can tell you right now people don't like Benny Hinn and don't like this one and don't like that one and don't like the other one because of who they are in God people who are insecure are very threatened by people with such definition about their lives we want you to have this definition. The world hates absolutes, but we are there, man. The word of God is absolutes. We can take this and we can run with it. And Father will look at that and go, you got my total backing. So reality of it is, when I'm going to go to release an anointing, and I, I you know, there is a couple of different ministers that the Lord really helped me uh, put this on. Because I saw it so common with some of the, God's greatest champions that are on the earth today. That every one of them did the same thing. They would walk up, they would lay their hands on the person and never say anything. Maybe, Jesus, or now, or what, or <laughs> nothing. What? What was going on? What was in them was being released, being I got something and I'm going to give it to you. And what happens is as you do this, as this happens, as you grow in it, you can literally feel yourself peeled up with it. Jesus felt power go out of him when the woman with the issue of blood felt power go into her. When I first started ministering to people, I felt nothing. I felt nothing. There would, be even, there would even be times where I wouldn't even go, but I'm going That's a release. To say, right now you're healed. And then feel the da 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 the release of it. But because, because it was all based upon what God was doing with me, the basis of all that we do is not on anything subjective. It's not on anything mystical or abstract. It's the solid foundation of the Word of God. Now, you're not going to run the risk of not obeying God's Word because I'm going to tell you right now, we all know, all the ministers that I know of know that the majority of Christians do not obey the word of God. They just sit around and talk about it. And they agree or they disagree based upon their doctrinal ba baggage. I started to say ba bias, but I got corrected by the Holy Ghost. Baggage. Because everybody wants the, the things of the Spirit wrapped up in their own denominational paper or doctrinal or preferential paper with their own, you know, denominational bow. <laughs> okay. It's true. We gotta just get rid of all of that, you know. We just get rid of all of that. Yeah. And and we're, we're here just simply obeying the word of God. It's what Papa said to do. And anything that says you're an exemption, everybody but you, you, God, he loves everybody but you, you, you. Everyone's anointed, but you, you, you. You have an unction. Everyone has an unction, but you don't have one. All that nonsense, that lying stuff that creeps in, these songs that keep singing, these ideas and events that keep replaying. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Because this is the first line of defense. This is the battleground. It's the battlefield of the mind. You don't deserve it. You're not worthy. The people don't like you. Nobody believes in you. No one's ever believed in you. If everybody said, if I just had somebody to believe in me. You do. More than one. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You've got three people who believe in you. Three. Three people believe in you. And then what happens when you're around someone like me that will not let it rest? Huh? That's constantly demanding of you, get up and start moving. Get up and start moving. 
Do it. Do it now. Do it. Don't sit there. Lift up your voice and shout. Lift up that voice and shout. Get hooked up. Get connected in this realm. Because now, what I, I can very clearly see after these years is now I see a quicker, more expedited route to step into a greater realm of maturity expressed in your life in less amount of time. It's true. It, 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 it is true. And, you know, I, we've actually had people come in, sit in the meeting for one month, and now they're out on the mission field casting out devils and preaching the gospel one month. It didn't take long. It doesn't take long. However, you can, if you're not careful, you're going to get stuck. We don't want you to get stuck. We want you to forget about stuck. Say, stuck is over. Stuck is over. We're good now, man. <laughs> we got six-wheel drive. <laughs> and we're not going to buy This is a six-by-six. Six. It's not bogging down in nothing. And if six by six isn't good enough for the swampy grounds you'd go in, we'll get you something else, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll get you something. We won't, we'll make sure you get those big floater tires. You're not getting stuck no more. <laughs> so when, when you begin to pray for somebody, when you begin to pray for somebody, it's faith, it's confidence. You're going to release anointing. So tell me, sometimes I, I ask people, if I don't really feel that there's a connection, if they're not looking at me, I'll ask them. I said, tell me what's wrong with you because I want to make a connection with them. That's what you do. Tell me what's wrong with you. What do you, what do you need prayer for? They tell me, I tell them then, by the authority of the word of God, here's what God is going to do to you, do for you. Jesus Christ is going to set you free right now. Lift your hands. Sometimes I tell them, look at me. Why? Because I feel it so strong. It's in the unction. It's the unction. It's a strong impression. That's what an unction is. An unction is a synonym with the anointing. It's a synonym with a strong impression. It's a synonym with a strong inspiration. God's word is... Inspired, it's an inspiration. I'll say, look at me. And I just lock in with them and make them lock in with me. And there's a transfer of, of the anointing going on. Huh? I'm not doing some spooky. It's Peter said, look on us. Look on me. Look on us. Silver and gold have we none. But what we have, we're going to give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, and it has to be both. Yes, it's resident in me. Yes, this anointing is that which flows out of me. It's that which I've received to give. We've received this to give. Somebody sitting around and said, I'm still waiting to receive. <laughs> well, the, you are the problem, not God. You're not talking God into this. You are dealing with your own issues. This is not God's issue. This is either fear issue, intimidation issue, unforgiveness issue, hurt issue, which is usually what it is. Then we get on down the list, sin issue, other issues. But Father's going to give it to you. Immediately empower you. One day you could be the worst rascal, most immoral, ungodly person on the face of the earth and the next mor morning, if you should call upon the name of the Lord, fully anointed to represent God, to go out and do what Jesus did in his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what the man with a demon, that's what the man of Gadara did. Possessed of a thousand, Jesus said, go home, show, what, show them what great things God has done for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gets there to the house and, and his, his wife's screaming, get away from me, get away from me. So going, he's going, no, 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 just wait. I, wait, calm down. I'm going to tell you what God's done for me. Just calm down for just a minute. You know these people are going to come in here and they're going to stone you. They told you if you ever come back here, they're going to kill you this time instead of just binding you up, taking you out there into the, into the, uh, to the uh, uh, graveyard. And they just hang on, just hold up. I've got to tell you something. I'm changed. I'm different now. You don't understand. Can you see that going down? Huh? The next day, one, for one day, one day, he's possessed with a thousand devils. Amen. And the very next day, the very next morning, he's a representative, representative of the kingdom of God. That's what you got to get. You got to quit being down in the mouth, thinking about all your goals and all your ambitions and all the things you're supposed to be doing. Guess what? You're supposed to be doing exactly what you're doing right now. You're supposed to be exactly where you are right now. Right now. Quit dreaming about another, you know, uh, greener pasture on the other side because it's actually browner over there. <laughs> be faithful with what you got right now. God will promote you. Amen. You'll get promoted if you just enjoy. You just start praising. Just start enjoying. Just start enjoying. Just start enjoying. Uh, 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 
and, and we all, we, we're going to go through this stuff for the rest of life. One, one of the most anointed men of God I know, one day was complaining about the problem, just going on and on and on. I said, hey, man, come on, give me a break, please. The Lord's just trying to promote you in the bigger problem. We both laughed. He said, I know, and yeah, but it's still a bummer, ain't it? We can still whine a little bit, can't we? No! No! And one, one, one friend of mine, God's anointed in such a wonderful way, he said, I'm tired of being under the pressure. I'm tired of being under the stress. Can't we just go ahead and, and just, you know, break through this part and just kind of sit back and relax? Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. When we get to heaven, Right now, get used to it, man. Come on, Bubba. Because whatever you collapse under, that's your limit. Whatever amount of anointing comes upon you, and you can't bear that up. Oh, this is too heavy for me. The backlash too heavy for me. The opposition too heavy for me. I can't take it. I can't take it. Oh, oh my. The problems. Well, then you can't, you can't bear up the anointing. Huh? I learned a long time ago, in the midst of the fire, I cry out, Turn up the heat! Come on, man. We might as well get on with the program. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I love that. That's why it's great. The message of the potter wheel is great. Huh? Because it's shaped by the hand of God, the potter's pressure. Huh? The right kind of pressure on the clay. Huh? To his shaping, right kind of pressure. Huh? Put you up on the shelf, looks at you for a while. I don't want to be on the shelf. I don't want to be on the shelf. God doesn't love me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he takes you, decides to add a little bit more thing to you. <laughs> Put a little more pressure on you. You feel a little bit better because now you're back under that. You're active again. Then he sets you in the 1200 degree Fahrenheit kiln. <laughs> See if you're going to explode. That's right. That's right. Are you with me? Everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Turn up the heat. Come on, man. Let's get on with this program. Hallelujah. Keep on us. Hallelujah. Then he, then he baptizes you in the glaze and what colors you and paints you and makes certain shapes and baptizes you in the glaze and sets you back in the heat one more time. Ooh, that feels different. <laughs> That feels different. Where am I at now? All the time I know I'm in the shaping, forming hand of an almighty God who loves me so much he's given everything that belongs to him into my trust. I've got something. I know who I am. I don't need anybody to tell me Christ Jesus told me who I am. I need no prophet to prophesy over me. I've got the Holy Ghost. He's told me who I am. You know what the, you know what the prophets do then? They come and declare and say to you, who you are. Oh, I see who you are. You don't need them come tell you about who you are. They're now witnessing. Oh, I see who you are. Because you only needed one person to tell you who you are, Jesus Christ. You only needed the Word of God to describe to you what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of people being messed up, having to always have, a, have another touch, have another word. Goodness gracious. I'm going to tell you one thing that has been always a blessing to me. Everybody that's come. Mark, it's such a blessing. Your people are not flaky. <laughs> Amen. Well, I get one hallelujah out of it. <laughs> that is good. That is good. I mean, because there's a lot of Pentecostal stuff that's going on that's really, you know, goodness gracious. Are you going to be okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. To be just sober. To be sober about these things. But I don't want you to be so sober that you basically are paralyzed. Right? You got to be sober and bold and confident. Amen. I want you to, for now on, the next time that you're ready to lay hands on, on someone to receive something, don't stand over top of them and pray. You're not going to be heard for your passionate prayer. Huh? I, I watch many pastors do this. <laughs> They're just going off in prayer, declaring everything since the person was born. <laughs> Up to the point that they are, and they just need, they got a virus. They need to be healed. They, just, they, they, they got a cold. They got to join up. Lay your hands on him. Healed. See, it's a word of faith. Healed. Smith Wigglesworth. That's the primary word he used. 
healed. And with a, with a strong Scottish English accent, healed. H E L T. Healed. <laughs> that was his word. Healed. Sometimes he punched people in the stomach. Healed. To get the point across. <laughs> And they got great miracles, great signs and wonders. That's why they brought the terminally ill to his meetings on, on stretchers, rolled out on stretchers, attended by nurses and doctors. Come on, man, let's do that again. Yeah. I, I don't even want people to make it to the platform. They got to get past you. They can't even get past you. They can't even get past you. I told Tim when he got here, I said, Tim, here's what I want you to do. Because Tim's qualified. Tim, I want you to go and I want you to tell... Teach the people at the church. Help them understand how to release anointing, flow on the gifts. He was able to just go so far by the dying, and he wanted to do it, but we are all under the constraint of that which the Holy Ghost would have us do at that time. And then in a situation like that, there's great diversity of needs. And Tim would have loved to come tonight. He just already had other engagements. And I would have had him come and let him teach on releasing the anointing. I don't want you to understand. It's just, it's, it's, once again, Knowing that you're anointed, being in the place of that flow. It's really good when, and I'm going to tell you what I do now, and I'm going to tell you what I believe that you should do. I believe you should build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When I leave my house to come to church, I, you will rarely see me walking into the church service, not going, and I stop and say hello. It's not that I don't want to spend some time visiting with you, I'm just up in heaven. And we're about a specific thing right now. We'll have to visit later. We're about a specific thing right now. Signs, wonders, and miracles. A specific, total, a specific work that's about the church, which is more than just sitting around having a meal together. We're a family, and we need to do that more. And to have a meal together kind of thing. But this is serious business. This is about learning how to fully represent everything that belongs to the realms of heaven and the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, that, and it's wonderful. You want to see somebody... Uh, see, flow in the word of God let me hear how the flow of the anointings coming out of them in tongues and I can tell you how well they'll, how accurate they'll flow in the word of God how much it will be them and how much it will be the Holy Ghost let me hear the flow of the Holy Ghost flowing out of you I'll tell you and then person's going to sing I'll tell you how much that will be the flow of the prophetic anointing of the Holy Ghost which is true worship and spirit and truth and how much of it just be singing and you can learn to do that for yourself I do that I know I know the measure of it I've given myself to it. I want you to give yourself to it because he's the best teacher. He's far better teacher than Carlos Anacondia has been to me. He's a far better teacher than, I mean, I could go, just go through a list of people. And, and, but I want you to know, out of everybody that I've ever met, it's tr truly Carlos had, been, had had the most impact on my life outside of my dad and some other ministers that are already, that are dead, okay? Um, you know, I was blessed when I came and I sat in a room with Oral Roberts and Oral Roberts began to talk to me about the anointing upon my life and, and wrote me out a letter that I, that I have to this day about what God had placed in my spirit. I, I watched a man of God at that age, 84 years old. Um, there was a person in, that he had a lot of respect for in the room and, they want, and, and his wife uh, wanted him to lay his hand on the boy and bless him. And so she was after him, Evelyn was after him, and, she, and he looks at her and says, look, I, I, there's, I'm not being co compelled by the Holy Ghost to do what you're asking me to do, to anoint him for ministry. And I said, my goodness, at 84 years old, he's kept faith with the Holy Ghost. He's, not, he's, he's kept within the boundaries of what the Holy Ghost would have him to do. But, you know, that's anointing a person for ministry. That's a different thing. It's not he was sitting there sick. If he was sick, he would have laid hands on him and prayed for him to be healed. I want you to understand that. We understand our limits. We understand what God's called us to do. God hadn't called you to go. And, and, and God, God would never say through me, by myself, to you. Now in the name of Jesus, Chrissy, I tell you, God anoints you now with the gift of evangelism. No, because I need other people around me who are seasoned enough to hear from God and can witness that gift so it can be confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. We confirm everything. There ain't nobody an island under themselves. No, it, nobody stands up as a sole representative of what God has purposed for us to do. We always are relying upon that confirmation and that witness. 
if you're part of the organization and the, and the flow of the way God does things. Are you with me? Yes. But what I'm just talking about is you have boldness and confidence to move in the authority that you've been authorized when you were given the anointing. What were you given? The authority to be a son. Wow. A son, not like any other son of God, but like the son of God, who is head over all principality and power and might and dominion. And I give you authority now to go cast out devils. Hallelujah. I give you power now to go do this. Go. All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. You go in my name. You go make disciples out of nations. Not disciples out of an individual only, out of nations. That's a much bigger assignment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My goodness. And out of that, now that praying hide said, give me India. I'll make India a disciple of the kingdom. Out of that, uh, Father Nash said, give me the United States of America. I'll make it a, a disciple for you. Out of that, John Knox cried out, give me Scotland or I die. See, the Lord gives that grace. But if you don't go down to your face and on your knees and begin to pry out, cry out to God for souls to start with, just now, obedience to the word, obedience to the word of God. Listen, if you're going to win souls, you're going to, be, you're going to have to have wisdom because they that win souls are wise. It takes wisdom. That's Holy Ghost insight, not just a whole bunch of want to. Okay? So we got to receive power. I'm always looking to receive power. I'm not just a one time I receive power, now go on and you know, go receive anymore. Huh? I receive power for every assignment. I'm going to receive power. I receive power to be here tonight to minister this to you. I receive power. I'm not going to run off this power for Sunday morning. I'm going to receive power on Sunday morning to minister Sunday morning. I'm not going to run off power on Sunday morning for Sunday night. I'm going to receive fresh power for Sunday night. I've got to know that. It's, it's a, that's the place of my relationship. Mm. See, that's what you must know. That's the place of the flow. See? And the place of the flow, there's going to be nothing but boldness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. And when you're in that place of the flow, then you can release the anointing because you have something to give. It's there. It's present with you. Hallelujah. First, by the word, because it's what God told you to do. Second, by relationship, you know the place of the anointing. Huh? And then all it is is then through that one act, receive, feel, be healed. Whatever God puts on your heart to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Most everything that the Holy Ghost wants us to do is written in the Word. It's already there. Majority of our assignment. And when we're faithful to do that, He's going to give us some more details. But if we don't do that, we're never going to get any more. He's going to, you know, we say, oh, God, speak to me. And He's going to say nothing. You know what that means? Go read the Word. When, when you say, oh, God, speak to me, and He doesn't speak, does you know what that really means? I've already spoken. Review. <laughs> There's nothing else to say right now. Get that. He's a loving father. He's a good father. Father's not, father's just solid as a rock. There's nothing weird about him. Nothing flaky about him. He doesn't change about anything. So he's full of... I think, the, I, you know, listen, I think that the greatest, my greatest confidence and boldness is, no, is, is the revelation that I have of how much he loves me, of how dear I am to him. I'm very special to him. I believe every one of God's people need that. They need to know that. Amen. To, know and love, to know and believe the love that God has for you. Herein is boldness. Herein is confidence, even in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, you will give an account for everything that's done in your body, both good and bad. You don't have to, you need, you need to sell some bones. Somebody said, you know, don't you mean I'm forgiven? Yeah, you're forgiven for it. But everything that you've done since you've been born again, since you've become a son of God, good and bad, you'll, be, you'll give account for it in the day of judgment. That's what Paul said. That's the doctrine of Paul. Nobody can deny that. Well, because I know how much he loves me, I'm boldness. I've got boldness. I've got boldness right now. I think for the probably, I don't know, probably the first five years of my ministry, all I did was preach on love. How much God loves you. That's all I did. I, I didn't even have another sermon. But God's love. Some people go, wow, I wish I was there in the first five years. Of <laughs> <laughs> I had people, 
they would tell me all the time, all you do is preach on love. All you do is all you know one message is love. You got the easy gospel. It's easy grace. <laughs> yeah, I got the easy gospel. Thank you very much. I got easy grace. Amen. Amen. And I, I have never lost it. It's just now the, for what's going on with me is an intensity. With every ear, we get more intense because time's running out. And, 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 and I believe it's the passion and the intensity of the Lord. And I've let that be checked. I've let people look into my life and say, is this the passion and intensity of the Lord? Yeah, it's passion and intensity. I'd like to have some. When men of God are telling me, I'd like to have some of that, please. <laughs> I got a witness. If they're telling me, calm down, man. You need to calm down. Then I would calm down. I would just calm down. Okay, Lord, there we go. And it'd still come down to this. It'd come down to like, Lord, I can't change myself. You've got to change me. You've made me very comfortable with who I am. I'm very comfortable <laughs> with who I am. You're, and if I'm going to be different, you're going to have to change me. If, if I'm going to, fl I'm depending upon you 100% to preach. I'm depending upon you 100% to speak. You've got all my trust. You've got all my confidence. Therefore, if I'm going to speak different, if I'm going to move different, if I'm going to after different, it's got to be you that moves me. And he does because uh, he'll fill me. You know, you know what I'm saying? He'll fill you with this intense, overwhelming joy that there's no way that you could have that of yourself. He fills you with this intense, overwhelming love. There's no way you can have that of yourself. He fills you with this intense peace. There's no way you can have this of yourself. He fills you with this intense Holy Ghost zeal. There's no way you can have that of yourself. This intense indignation. There's no way you can have that of yourself. That's just what he does. This intense quietness. There's no way you can have that of yourself. And everybody else sits around and judge. And if you're going to be too impacted by what everybody else is thinking, you're going to be stopped before you ever get started. You've got to be locked in with what he's thinking. I just want to please you, Father. That's what we talk about when we're saying surrender. That's what we're talking about when we're saying consecration. I just want to please you, Father. I just want to do what you want me to do. And he's basically saying, okay, then do it. <laughs> Pretty simple relationship, huh? <laughs> Lord, I just want to do what you want me to do. Do it. I, I authorize you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in Jesus' name, receive. Now, I just felt that go out of me. I'm praying no long prayer. I release what's in me. That's all I did. I felt that anointing go out of me. Though some of you have the ability to immediately soak that in and receive that at the varying degrees. Everybody's impacted by it, whether they realize it or not. They impacted by it. Whether it's just a, the person coming and going, I don't know what it is, but every time I come to a meeting, I feel so much peace. Yeah, because there's a release of the anointing. Hallelujah. You are the carriers of divine power and glory on the level that the Holy Ghost is in you. Jesus Christ is in you. The Father God is in you. And you know everything. You know everything about flowing in the anointing. You know everything about how to please God. It's there. It's there. That's what Papa says. If it wasn't written in the Bible, you wouldn't have to believe it. But it's written right there. 1 John 2.20. We have an anointing from the Holy One. We know everything. And then he goes ahead at the end of the chapter and he emphasizes saying, we don't need anybody to teach us anything. Huh? But the anointing himself teaches us everything. Right? Pretty radical, huh? What is that? That is a release of the anointing, not to for me building myself up, but for you. I will actually interpret by the things that I'm saying. Asa is a message. It is not a prayer. Is an, is an authority that is, that is released on your behalf. And it is as strong as if I prayed a most specific detailed prayer for you. And out of that builds then those things that would ultimately be detailed specifics for you that God would speak through my lips or through your lips to someone else, then understand, people, there's, don't try to climb up some other way. Don't try to shortcut this wonderful sacred realm that belongs to God. Don't. Go. There's only one way in. If you try to go in any other way, you're but a thief and a liar. A thief and a robber. Forgive me. 
But if we just come this way in Christ Jesus and we say, okay, this is what God has given me to do. I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give myself to enjoying this relationship. I'm going to give myself to doing what the Word of God tells me to do. Lay hands on the sick. Preach the gospel. I'm, my heart is being filled with seeing other people blessed and set free. It just grows and matures. And that increase comes. And then we get to be those who are here to perfect you. I want you to get this. The people that we bring in here are for the purpose of perfecting you. Not to put a feather in our cap. It's the purpose of perfecting you. God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and there's no way that I could be all fivefold. I'm all five in one. I don't believe that. I'm pastor. Okay? In this church, I'm pastor. Sometimes I function in the office of prophet. But mostly I function in the office of the pastor. And so we bring apostles in. We bring evangelists in. We bring in other pastors. We bring in teachers. So that you can be perfected. Why? So that you can be equipped to go do the work of ministry. So we just did four days, whether you realize it or not, four days of equipping. I was very focused with Tim. We were very focused together. I said, I'm believing. I want you to believe with me. This is, equip, this is an equipping meeting. Now, we want you to release everything God gave you now. And there are a few people that are ready to receive at various different levels. If you could receive everything that he had, it, that God had given him, and God has given him great things. Because Tim is a father. He may be funny. <laughs> a little bit overboard com comedian. But when the push comes to shove, you're going to get the job done, and he's a father in the faith. And so I pray, and I believe this. I believe that every one of you have an increase in that equipping. And as time goes on, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to seize these opportunities even more. Why? You like it? You're going to be like the one with issue of blood, and you'll learn how to draw it. You can draw it. Hallelujah. You can draw. You watch me sit on the front row. See me? I, I'm there. I'm drawing it. I draw that. I'm, I'm, if I, I'm touching, not a man, the anointing. I'm not touching a man. I'm not in any way putting Tim Hall or anyone up on a pedestal. I'm touching the anointing that God has given them. I'm going after the things in the realms of all the ghosts that's in their life. Because it's for my perfection too. Because we're all, every one of us, no matter who you are, where you're at, what you've accomplished, all of us are growing. All of us are maturing. How desperate are we? How hungry are we? How much do we really truly believe that Jesus is in our midst and that he's doing this and the supply is for us? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's a build-up time right there. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I can't overemphasize this, and I'm going to say this in closing. If you've got something sitting in here tonight, believe me, you were trained. All you got to do is do it. It's like, remember, right now, it's like Jesus standing out to you, crying out to you, come. If it be you, Lord, bid me come, and I walk on the water too. He's saying, come. Now, it's up to you whether or not you're going to step out. And then there isn't a time limit. You don't have to do this next five minutes, otherwise it's going to be opportunity lost. Just next time, the next opportunity. And just take it to prayer. I want to, I, you cannot overemphasize giving yourself to praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? It's what happened when the Holy Ghost came. And it ultimately was that keystone to fulfilling everything that Jesus said about the river flowing out of you. Okay? Because he said, when the Holy Ghost, this big key of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, and when the Holy Ghost was given, they all began to speak with other tongues. There is no single gift in the Bible that a whole chapter is dedicated to it. Not one single gift except for tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, a whole chapter is dedicated to it. Not one single gift. Not one single gift. Not one single gift. Not even miracles. It has a whole single chapter de dedicated to just miracles, how to operate in it, what to do, what not to do. Tongues are important. Amen. Hallelujah. Teachers doing more on the inside of us than what we could ever possibly realize. Building us up. You know what? Strengthen us. Huh? It's like, it's like Samson going around grinding 
meal for the Philistines, right? And he's saying, strengthen me yet this one more time, right? And then he gets in between the pillars and he cries out, oh God, strengthen me yet this one more time. Well, that's what was going on when we prayed in the Holy Ghost. We're being strengthened for the same supernatural strength and might and power and divine ability. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I ask you to shake everybody in this place. Especially everybody on this side right here. I'm not going to leave anybody out over here. He cut us out on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shaken by the power of God. Shaken. 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 I pray in Jesus' name that every one of you have such a passionate destiny on you that when Mariah, when you get to heaven, Mariah Woodworth, that her first person she wants to meet is you because she wanted to be that way and never got there. I'm going to say that again. I want you to get such a passion in God that when you get to heaven, Mariah Woodworth Edder, the one who meets you. Because she always wanted to be that passionate and she never got that depth. She didn't have enough. If she was, she'd probably come to you and say, if I would have only been able to start where you started, perhaps I would have got where you got. In Jesus' name. Amen. This generation. Yes has more than any generation has ever had before. Yes. And we can't run the risk of doing less with it. We're going to yes. do more with it. We're going to yes. do more with it. Yes. We're going to do more with it. Yes. Hallelujah.